This college baseball world series picks edition of the sports gambling podcast brought to you by edge boost edge boost enables you to double your bet with no interest. Go to sports gambling podcast.com slash edge to get started today. We're also brought to you by bird dogs shorts. The world's greatest shorts are hooking you up with a free Yeti style tumbler. When you order over at bird dogs.com slash pool, that's bird dogs.com slash pool. Hey, this is John Smoltz and you're listening to S G P N let it ride. Welcome everyone to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean stacking that money green with my partner of picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Yeah, I'm in the box, and yes. it feels like there's some tension in the box. <laughs> Gotta be honest, right? We now. we are tipping off here, 8:52 p.m. Normally oh. we're locked and loaded, 8:30 every Sunday and Thursday, oh. live on youtubecom slash podcast. Weather delay. Weather delay. Technical delay. Joining us here, completely unrelated <laughs> to the delay, Colby Dan, aka the Dan to base. What's up, Colby? Uh, uh, pick knuckleball Dundee. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. pickle. We need to call Why? you pickleball Dundee. Why are you called that? I don't know. You like two knuckles deep? Is that what? Oh, oh, oh! oh Colby's yeah, in a oh, sour oh. mood, Ryan. We're yeah. trying to have fun. About We're to trying throw to throw the computer against the wall. Right We're now. trying to celebrate the game of baseball, the joy of watching in aluminum bats, uh, just you know, nail dingers, kids getting drunk off Jello shots, everything that's great in America. You can get here in this college baseball World Series, and you know, as much as a bummer to lose the NBA and NHL finals. Of course, I had the. Uh, I, I did have the Knights. Kramer nailed the uh, Nuggets in five there. As much as that's a bummer, it's championship awesome. Championship podcast. It's awesome because it gives us plenty of time to focus on degenerate activities like the College Baseball World Series. Joining us on the line, he is the host of the College Baseball Experience, Mr. Noah Beanick. Noah, what's happening, man? How's it going, guys? Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And yeah, like you kind of alluded to, college baseball is taking center stage. Just mm. all all sports fans, if they're looking for something to do during the day, <laughs> one we have we have afternoon games, yes. so that's already a winner, even when there's NHL and NBA. But now we have the night too. Uh, again, uh, I mean, uh, this is a perfect time to to take a take a shot here at MLB. I mean. MLB, what are you doing? Every you have 162 games. You have 30 some teams. Every day in the summer, there should be one uh, early day game, one afternoon day game. Give us something uh, to watch. Can, we got eight wow. fucking TVs. Can I piggyback on the fact that maybe the MLB should try something where all the teams play each other? That that would be a great <laughs> idea. If you play they 162, do. no, they don't. No, they don't because the Orioles never play at Dodger Stadium. Well, they, no, they what, alternate this year years. is the first year they actually do that, Colby. Oh, is this the first year they do that? Okay, well, thank you. Wow. They, they, they noticed that, that because Laser for years focused. they didn't. Yeah. All right, but hey, we're not here to show the MLB. We're here to celebrate college baseball. One thing that's gotten on my radar, uh, mm. I would love the backstory. Rocco's Pizza Jello Shot Challenge. I remember seeing it last year. It has all the teams. From what I can tell, it's a local place where um, you this go. This is why we have to do this in Omaha every year. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, I, yeah. I mean, sorry. Rocco's this is has why, got that type of pull. This is why we right? have the oh, privilege yes. of okay. going to Omaha for the championship <laughs> of baseball every year. Omaha is a, a city where, you know, you're not dying to be sober. So the jello shots, the pizza, good combo there and it seems and from what I can tell there's a challenge that happens where each team's fan base like hey if you're LSU you order a bunch of jello shots they keep a running tally and then there's some sort of prize F finish it off here Noah what is the whole Rocco's pizza jello shot challenge yeah you got the gist of it correct and uh, this is a really cool uh new thing that they did because this was a small business in Omaha Nebraska where the college world series didn't go there in 2020 due to COVID and they were in need of a new invention or a new kind of 
uh, shtick to like help business start booming again. And in 2021, I believe it was their first year doing it, and it was popular. 2022, it blew up. Yeah, and it started off with Arkansas. Like the first two nights, they had ordered seven thousand Jello <laughs> shots. <laughs> Wait, and, really? Uh, yes, yes, it was nuts. Uh, the hogs showed up in masses to this little bar <laughs> and just bought a shitload of Jello shots and the duration of the college world series kind of correlates to how many shots a fan base can buy because mm, yeah. if your team gets eliminated, most yeah. of the fans are going to leave the area. So Ole Miss, then they went to the finals and their fan base even like flooded the place even more. And they got up to 17,000 last year for the record. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't write it down, but it's something like that. 17,000. This is hilarious. We I'm, have the data right now. Yeah. Eight, no, actually 18,777. Wow. Is what Ole Miss, more than I thought. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And and this place is great. They see they did something big for the Kentucky Derby too. This seems like a real D-Gen place to uh, oh, to, to hang out. You know, there's a Rocco's <laughs> in the Valley. It's a good place to get some meatballs. There, uh, I don't know if people come for the food. I'm on their Yelp review. They have 41 <laughs> Yelp reviews, only three stars, which oh, is no. never a good sign. <laughs> Uh, a oh, number no. of a oh. number of one star reviews. No, dude, a yes. three star in Nebraska is like a thirteen star <laughs> here, though. Dude, yeah, yeah. Uh, Everybody listening to this show, go drop Rocco's a five star review and just yeah. say whoa, whoa, Jello whoa, Shot whoa. Challenge LSU I, or something. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would never ask someone to do that until I try out Rocco's <laughs> in beautiful Omaha. Uh, they are flexing the Jello Shot Challenge on their on their Instagram title that says Rocco's pizza and cantina <laughs> home of the, the CWS jello shot challenge, which their, is college. Their World Twitter series. profile is just named CWS <laughs> jello shot challenge. Jo Josh, uh, his one star review Tyson microwave tacos and stale tortilla chips. <laughs> I ordered chicken tacos and chips and salsa. My food was prepared in less than five minutes. Tasted like they opened a bag of Tyson chicken meat and threw it on a flour tortilla. The chips I ordered were definitely stale and the salsa was steps below Tostino's. <laughs> Two stars. That's very chicken specific for two a star, review. Two stars. Chicken nachos were the worst I've we've ever had. <laughs> so stay the, away from the chicken nachos. The old, no, it was <laughs> grilled chicken, cheese, lettuce, tomatoes, uh, standard nachos. Uh, well, what we got, we were shocked. Uh, nachos had chicken, cheese, and banana peppers. What a winning combination! Oh, okay. Uh, I will say that on uh, TripAdvisor, it's got a four point out. Okay, there all you right. Go. So, you, unique pizza combination, five well, stars. Now this is Scott H from Topeka, Kansas, and maybe this is a uh, <laughs> maybe hilarious. this is Dayton back. I was drawn in by the location and appearance. The pizza was like cardboard with minimal <laughs> toppings. I would not recommend this place to anyone. All right, so it seems like you go there to get. Wasted oh, and oh. win the Joe shot yeah. challenge. I got one here. Good pizza and service. The three little pigs will blow you away. Five stars, Sean. July third, uh, okay. two thousand twenty-one. No, he's talking about a menu item and not the bartenders, <laughs> right? Because I, I don't want to, I don't want to get in trouble with him. Uh, uh I, I mean, honestly, like imagine, imagine someone leaving Yelp reviews at the college bars you attended. Oh my God. And wherever Ooh. you I went mean, to again, college. normally any of the food they have is like, they're legally required to have food because yeah. of something. There's some ratio not, of liquor to food sales. They have you're to you're not going there to, to enjoy the cuisine. Right. I, I gotta be honest. I was in Lincoln, Nebraska with my mm. wife going across. I took her I, part of the honeymoon to check out the Nebraska football game. <laughs> uh, and, one, uh, of, one of the three yeah. weddings, uh, Colby, it didn't invite. <laughs> <laughs> she she was not the biggest fan of the food scene in Lincoln or yeah. or the uh, coffee scenario. Really? Very tough to get a good coffee and uh, as food as far as food. So hopefully Omaha is better than that. Uh, yeah, uh, Brian Reese in the chat again. youtubecom slash sports game and podcast. He's uh he's he's proudly touting we have the debut of Charles Schwab Field, aka the Chuck. Uh, what do we what well, do we? Second year for it. This oh, year. second year. Yes, Sorry, the Chuck is just awesome, off awesome nickname for it. Let's go. Well, and and how is that going to impact? Like, what are we talking as far as okay. how the fence? Well, what, real what we quick, because I just uh, just we should workshop this now live on the show. Mm. But uh, fuck at the Chuck is that oh, a thing? Okay. Our kids oh. doing that, oh. or is or that? you know, teams really bad. Suck oh. at the Chuck. Oh, so, yeah, fuck it's, the Chuck. It's still new. One yeah. year in, we're still coming up. And with Chuck, it rhymes with yeah. so many things. That's great. Wow. And I'll say also on TripAdvisor, Charles Schwab Field, the Chuck at the fuck has a uh, four and a half <laughs> stars, and it says 
Uh, ballpark food at its best, five stars. Uh, well, there you, maybe yeah. that's where you go. And yeah. again, don't have too many uh, Jello shots at Rocco's, otherwise it becomes uh, the upchuck. Remember, uh, remember, the Jello will will oh, make the good. release Thanks. a little slower, and that sugar is going to hit you a little harder. <laughs> real, real quick, before we get into yeah. the world, I did have a little content prepared because I thought it would be fun. Colby, try not to look at my monitor. But I wanted you guys. Can you guys name all the states that border Nebraska? Again, we we every year every year we we head to the beautiful mecca that is Omaha, Nebraska, for college baseball. A beautiful American story. There are six states that border Nebraska. Wyoming. Can you name all six? Wyoming. Wyoming is one of them. Iowa. Yes, Iowa is one. By the way, Omaha basically on the border of Iowa and Nebraska. Yes, and that's the strategy. If anybody's going down there for uh, the College World Series, stay in Council Bluffs, Iowa. There's a casino right there. Mm. Gambling's oh, no. not legal in Nebraska. <laughs> no, no, isn't. I mean, talk about a Sherpa. Yes. Full, full service. And baby. yeah, fire up the. You're in Iowa. Fire up the online sports. Wa- Wyoming, Iowa, Colorado, Colorado. Yeah. Yep, that's Oklahoma. three. Kansas. Kansas, there are two oh, left. Oklahoma. Oklahoma is not yeah, one I of them. Up. I said Oklahoma. <laughs> there, there are two more. I, I think I got them. What's I, that? I think it's the Dakotas. Right? South Dakota. South Dakota. Is yes. It, is it Minnesota or is it Minnesota in there? No. Nope. Arkansas no. one. Nope. North <laughs> Dakota then. It's nope. one of the Wisconsin. Two, right? Nope. Wisconsin's close. It, it is Missouri. Oh, Missouri, really? Wow. That's, little, okay, I would have never guessed that. that. A little, that. a little bit of the northern part of Missouri borders with the southern, southern tip of Nebraska. There, so can you guys tell I haven't been out to Nebraska yet? <laughs> no, it's important. I mean, we got back when we went to school; they taught geography. Mm. Clearly, the young kids aren't getting the same type of learning. So, I, I used to pride myself on my geography knowledge, especially in the States. <laughs> However, I had not taken an, a history or geography class since the 12th grade. So. We're so old. We got taught. We got, we, we went to school back when they, uh, the school was still good. Before it got ruined by domes and and, and the upchuck, roughing the past the, and the upchuck at the Schwab. <laughs> All right, right. Uh, so so uh, anything the field the upchuck here does it <laughs> does it is it going to have an impact on the game? Is it going to favor certain teams uh, over others? Do you do you imagine no? Yeah. So Charles Schwab uh, Charles Schwab Field is basically a mu- a ninety percent. It's it's a bigger park than like ninety percent of ballparks on campus for college baseball. The long ball just doesn't play as well in Omaha as it does in Mm. uh, other places around the country. The winning formula in college world series play usually is a really good starting rotation. uh, When it comes to pitching excellent defense, Uh, you try not like don't kick the ball around Um, a lot of new viewers coming to college baseball. Errors are common. Uh, Walks are common. Uh, just they're not pro players and like mistakes are more prone to happen and a lineup. You need a lineup that can get on base, hit the gaps with line drives for doubles or mm. create chaos on the base path. Hit, hit the gaps. Just like Charles Schwab used to do when he played baseball. Right? <laughs> so, so what, all right. So that, that being said, all right. Do, are any of the teams here play in a stadium this big TCU. Okay. Hmm. So maybe good, good maybe to know. slightly in here. Do, to are, are there any teams that fit the profile of a team that meets all the requirements that you just laid out? TCU does not. Oh. Um, I would say the teams that should the teams that Omaha is going to favor would be Wake Forest, Florida. Uh, I don't take Florida back. Wake Forest, Virginia. And Oral Roberts. Ooh. Okay, two of those are dogs. Well, now you mentioned Oral Roberts, the the Cinderella coming in here. Uh, what do, what do, what is your take on on Oral Roberts? Do they have a legit chance of winning it all? I'm I'm getting ahead of ourselves, but their future, they're really the outlier. They're the longest long shot at 22 to one right now. Of course, we're down to eight teams here in Omaha. Do you think Oral Roberts is a live dog here? I unfortunately do not. I think Aww. that the three other teams in their brackets in their bracket is a threat to win the college world series title. Um, but I, I think they're the first weekend. They really impressed me. They came out of what I thought was the toughest regional in the NCAA tournament. Then they took on an Oregon team that really lacked any talent on the pitching side. Um, and they struggled. 
and they couldn't keep their offense in the ballpark. Um, Oral Roberts starting pitching staff really kind of let them down. Uh, the bullpen is still a strength. However, the numbers are great on the starting pitching and they did good in Stillwater in their regional. Uh, I just, I can't trust that right now. Cause that was my original, um, opinion on this starting staff. I just didn't know how good they would be outside of the summit league. They were all right that first weekend. They were kind of what I expected and not that great the second weekend. But they won. Like, I mean, look, I, th- this team hasn't lost. They, they were up 8 nothing in the one game they lost, oh, right? They lose 9-8. to eight. Prior to that crazy game, they haven't lost a game since April 22nd. Like, and I, I get it. I get Don't they're, let them get hot. They're in the Don't summit league. Don't let them get hot. They're in the summit league, but they beat Oklahoma State on May 2nd in a, in, in the regular season. They then beat Oklahoma they State, Oklahoma Washington, State and Dallas Baptist, which is a top oh, twenty-five. You. you know, like this is a good team. Sean, man. this man is a dozen teams deep into his college football <laughs> previews, and he is passionately Still, calling. I'm just saying, fired up for Oral I'm just Roberts. Saying it. I, look, I, I know Noah knows his stuff, but I'm just saying, like, it, he's almost saying that they, they they disappointed. They were the dog. They won in Eugene. Quick, <laughs> quick question: Has Benedict shown up on the base path? Uh, well, there, was, there was some USFL Benedict, but I'll save no, it for no, that. No, show, no, right? just yeah. any college baseball yeah, Benedict, Benedict that one. Benedict. Any, uh, well, and, and I don't think so. There and, really and, hasn't been an opportunity for it. He, <laughs> he does it on the SGP show, and then he goes to TCE for college that's basketball. That's true. Yeah, or it's a one show. Football, if given a shot, if given a shot, I'm sure he would. Uh, we got it before we get to the <laughs> picks, and we will be giving out picks for Friday's games, Saturday's games. This got on my radar, and uh, thanks for including it in the rundown here, Noah. But Tennessee's Chase Burns uh, got in trouble. He did a throat slashing oh, no. gesture, no. and the NCA is <laughs> they're reviewing whether or not it was taunting. Uh, well, NCA, I'll let you know it was taunting. He was a <laughs> Tennessee reliever. He threw for over 102 miles per hour oh, over the yeah. weekend. He could be suspended for four games. What? Obviously, that would have a huge impact on. Tennessee and their chances here. What's the latest on chase burns and the Vols? I would, I would say that if there was one team that could endure losing their, uh, I mean, he's kind of new to the back end of that bullpen okay. uh, throughout the first three fourths of the year. He was a struggling starter, kind of good start, bad start kind of guy. Um, and he's found new life in the back end of that bullpen. I wouldn't call them closer yet. They just bring them in in huge spots in the, in the seventh, eighth, maybe even ninth inning. He does have one save. Uh, he's, he's got three appearances in the last month in a leverage situation. And he's looked amazing. I think it suits him well because they literally just say, go out and throw 20 pitches as hard as you can. And then whip that slider in every two or three pitches and shit. Um, uh, if there's one team that can endure it, it's Tennessee. They have tremendous depth in that bullpen. And I just think this has been brought up because a lot of fans, uh, kind of pointed it out that it was like a throat slash. Uh, there's been instances throughout the season that were kind of just BS in suspension and suspending players. Um, and it literally happened in the Tennessee Clemson game with Cam Canarello Clemson's center fielder talking uh, to another Tennessee player. And it happened to Florida's closer earlier this season where he yeah, missed like four a, games a, for screaming. Let's go to the other dugout. But it, it's yeah, so dumb. It, it also like it even, yeah, obviously it's kind of taunting, but he wasn't even looking at the other players. He was just going like Dude. this to his other taunting is good for the sport. Yeah, like, t- four games they act like he went to Epstein Island or something. <laughs> What's going on for? I know four games in the and college real, world real series quick. is a death sentence. A kid, a, a, much like Epstein and death kids sentence. nowadays. They're so they want to text and, and be distant. They don't like a manual knife slashing. Like yeah. That's not what he means. He's doing some sort of Fortnite celebration. <laughs> What's That's going all. on here? I can't believe they're even talking about this it, as it a is, possibility. I, I mean, again, maybe like th- there should no, you know, I don't whatever the equivalent is to fine. Like make him, uh, make him chalk the lines for the next game. Like you don't, <laughs> they're not making any money. This, this is like there a lot of these guys. It's their only opportunity. This is absurd. Is this the N- this is the NCAA too? This is they're, their- they're desperate to hold on uh, to whatever <laughs> any power type they have. of power. If they realize the being cool might help them gain popularity, <laughs> I mean maybe different strategy. It's not. It has not been working right now. 
All right, we're gonna get to the picks before we do that. Uh, of course, we're gonna talk about Edge Boost. Love Edge Boost. Uh, I was edge boosting some U.S. Open uh, bets uh, just uh, just before the show. Check out the U.S. Open episode uh, if you didn't. That was a lot of fun with uh, Capper and Steve from the Golf Gambling Podcast. Kramer just nailed his edge boost double down play of the day. Nuggets in five. I mean, imagine again. This is you should look at edge boost as a tool, right? So you're you're able to double your bet. Obviously, let's say you want to put a hundred dollars. Now you use the edge boost. You can put down two hundred dollars. You have to pay that hundred dollars back, but you can pay it off in four equal weekly installments. And again, I know what you're saying. Too good to be true, but it's zero percent interest. Uh, that you know, again, zero percent interest. They're not trying to rake you over the coals or trap you into something. And again, it's the world's first ever bet now pay later visa card. It's it, the dashboard's really pretty cool. You can set up your limits all across different books. You can manage all your deposits from one central location. Again, grow your bankroll and support SGPN. Go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash edge to sign up today. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash edge must be 21 years or older to use problem gambling. Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, Noah, let's get to it. You have a plethora of different stats in here. I don't Ooh. even know if I'm going to try and get in on these 11 AM Pacific oral Roberts plus one forty versus TCU lane minus 175. I mean, you got a, you got a ton of stats in here. You got some whip, you got some walks for Ooh. nine. Uh, one point five six SBPG parentheses fifty six. So much going on here. I'm a gut <laughs> handicapper. I'm probably going to lean Oral Roberts again. Just to Colby's point, this team is red hot. Uh, much like much like my Phillies, much like the Oakland A's who have, have been on a nice little streak here. What are you doing for this game? Walk us into the uh, Oral Roberts TCU. Uh, uh oh. Yep. <laughs> Muted myself. So on, right. I said this. <laughs> I said this on the TCE show. I feel like I have a good read on this, and I've bet every game personally. Uh, to start off, I always bet on starting pitching, mm. and for TCU, like none of these p- matchups are confirmed. That's why we don't have totals right now. That's why we don't have uh, run lines. But for TCU, Cole Klecker has been their game one starter for the whole second half of the season. He's got a 217 ERA in his last seven appearances. He's been rolling right now. And like I mentioned, Oral Roberts starting pitching like rotation, it's been a little shaky in the NCAA tournament. And Jacob Hall, who's been their ace throughout the year, he has a 592 ERA in two NCAA tournament starts, and he lacks strikeout stuff. And against the TCU lineup that has been absolutely rolling right now, um, they are... 19 and two since May 1st, mm-hmm. and they're hitting 350 as a team with a 995 OPS. They're going to put the ball in play and go, they run the base pass like maniacs. I think that's uh, a bad matchup for Hall and Oral Roberts. I like TCU at minus 175 here. So, and, and real quick, just big picture here there's eight teams, they're each in a four team pool, double elimination, knockout. And then those final two teams square off in a three game series, correct? Correct. So this is the first game of uh, what would be like, if they lose, they would have to uh, win four straight games to just get to the finals. Yeah. So basically this is the first round. The second round is the winners playing the winners and the losers playing, playing the losers, the loser, the loser of the loser game gets eliminated, et cetera, et cetera. So oral Roberts TCU and then uh, Stanford and wake are the, are they in, in the same bracket or what break down the bracket? No, or so the brackets, the games that are being played on the same day. So okay. on okay. Friday, which is opening day for the college world series, you got uh, oral Roberts and TCU and then Virginia, Florida as the nightcap. And then for uh, Saturday, the next day you have Stanford wake forest in the afternoon, T- Tennessee is LSU as the nightcap, which is maybe going to be the best game that we see in this tournament. Both right. fan bases are really rowdy. It's going to be a weekend nightcap game. It's going to be awesome. It's competing with the USFL. <laughs> well, I like it. What I a like bold it. strap. It's going to be, it's going to be interesting. Um, well, and the US open. Wow. How bold t- volleyball. Uh, look, uh, I don't know about a, at night US open. Oh, well, actually it is West coast. This yeah, year. it is yeah. kind of late. <laughs> Colby. How see you on oral Roberts versus TC. Well, they got Jonah Cox. Oh, wow. Long. 
Jonah, Gosh. you're kind of, okay. this guy. Uh, we might have to do a check. We might have Pete Rose 2.0 here. 47 game hit streak. That is uh that is now the third longest in the history of college baseball. And uh Robin Ventura was, was is is the leader at this for 58 games. I think he might like have to the watch same out. Same guy who got he his ass kicked out. by Nolan Ryan. Yeah, I think oh. Jonah Cox is going to be that guy. <laughs> oh, I mean, for the younger people who haven't seen Robin Ventura oh, and Nolan an Ryan time, fight, that's an all time. Yeah. But do we do we worry about the fact that the bats are hot and Jonah Cox is leading the way for the for Oral Roberts? That's what I'm going with. Noah right? told me that TCU is not going to be overwhelmed by the the size, the girth of the stadium. So <laughs> it's going to handle. I, the I size. mean, how do I how do I not take Oral Roberts? I, I know you made a case for the pitching, but at minus 175, this game looks way more like a toss up to me. You're looking mm-hmm. at eight and a half runs per game for Oral Roberts to TCU's eight. Um, Oral Roberts batting average 323 compared to 299. I expect this to be a close, good game. Uh, and you could make a case right now. Don't you think Oral Roberts? Do you think would you give Oral Roberts the edge hitting wise, or am I crazy? I think you're a little. Uh, throughout the season, yeah, TCU is just on another level compared to how they played throughout the rest of the season mm. since May on. So now, now obviously the run lines aren't out, but if you like TCU minus one seventy five, are you considering playing TCU minus one and a half on the run line and getting a better price there? Because I'm not a guy who can, I'm not usually a guy who lays like minus one seventy five. Usually minus one eighty is my price in baseball, where I, I just don't touch it, and I'd prefer a run line or just put it into a parlay. Um, minus one seventy five is all of the above for me, so I'd be looking at a run line here. I'd be looking at a money line. This is my second favorite pick of the four games. No, Noah, do we worry at all? Just like in, in when we see March Madness and, and the the field of sixty eight, and I think the crowd is going to be behind Oral Roberts, right? No, I th- I think that TCU is just going to overwhelm the stadium, right? Oral Roberts, TCU is like a small. We were talking school, about though. it on TCE. Like, uh, Oral Roberts is a small, uh, you know school with 4,000 mid 4,000s enrollment. Um, their, their athletic department has been really good recently for mid major. They're going to have some of the Omaha locals, but TCU is going to travel. I'm telling you, Texas is passionate about college baseball. The frogs will show up, but hang on, hang on. But if you're LSU fans, if you're Florida fans, if you're all these other schools, you're going to be rooting for oral Roberts, right? Oh yeah, for, for sure. But I just think that this environment is going to be like 70, 70% TCU fans, 10% Oral Roberts, and then 20% opposing fans rooting for the Cinderella. Okay. Cause I, I, I picture like remember St. Peter's that run in college basketball. I just felt like the whole stadium started rooting for St. Peter's to beat Kentucky. Yeah. So I mean, okay. it, it just happened with my team in 2019 in Michigan. We didn't have a re- really good following at all. Uh, there was maybe 2000 Michigan fans in Omaha that year. Um, and we just were dwarfed in the stadium for every game. Okay. I'm going Oral Roberts again. The, the, the Cinderella story. I'm a sucker for it. The plus one forty. I, I don't know. I, I, it, this for, feels like it's going to be a close game. I, I get, you. I get I'm the case you. that TCU's dialed in, but so is Oral Roberts. This is how they got here. Now, maybe the, the layoff between the games, you lose a little bit of your momentum, but I'll take Oral Roberts plus money. Kramer, what are you doing? For, for a gut handicapper like you, yeah. Sean, this is an all name team. Uh, you know, they've got Jonah Cox, who we mentioned already, yep. who plays for Oral Roberts. Great name. Holden Breeze, their third baseman, <laughs> sick name. How about Blaze Brothers? Their oh, second baseman. Blaze baseman. Brothers? That's great. <laughs> and and their catcher's a god. Well, Blaze Bre- name's Godman. <laughs> Blaze Breeze is probably holding as well if you're doing the math there on that. <laughs> Blaze Brothers, sorry. Uh Kramer, what do you got here? Oral Roberts TCU. I, I I'm a sucker for some plus I, appre- odds. I appreciate your long handicap to, uh, to pick a team called the Eagles. Mm. Uh, you do this all the time. Wow. Everyone's surprised that Sean comes in here and picks the Eagles. It, it was it was planned. Look, the, this uh, by the way, Oral Robert. I don't know if you mentioned this, but first time back uh, since '78, 45 years ago. Probably. Yeah, yeah, that's back. back that's when why they played, they're gonna win. That's back when they played with wooden bats. Uh, I actually have no idea if that's accurate. 
Uh, it sounds like a lot of fun to play Oral Roberts, but the futures market is telling me all I need to know. This team doesn't have a fucking chance. <laughs> TCU baby, Noah made me some money during the early stages. Yeah, I mean, I guess the the counter, as Ryan's pointing out, if there's a team that's twenty two to one to win yeah. it all, and you look at the, well, the, I mean, look at the Stanley TCU, Cup and the, the uh, TCU is a, a plus eight hundred. So obviously the market feels like there's a pretty big difference uh, in these teams and their ability to get it done. Somebody, somebody told me that Sean bet Oakland to win the AL West. Dude. I did. And look, they've won. Don't let them get yeah. hot, Noah. Yeah. They won seven in a row. I, They're down a couple runs. He also right took now. my Orioles. <laughs> I will say doing, at twenty-five yeah. to one. I also got a uh, Justin Steele. Shout out to uh, Justin Steele. What, what it was like a hundred to one. Now he's down to twenty to one. He also had the, the friend of the program. Also had the Cubs playing the Phillies in the World Series. So uh, a lot to unpack. <laughs> yeah, there. and I blame the Cubs. They're, the Cubs aren't pulling their weight here. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, let, let's uh, let's move along. Well, my but, baseball handicap is I, fast and loose. Uh, Try and keep up. I will say, single elimination baseball is electric. I mean, I know it's not; it, it's one game. Uh, you know, like they have to lose two, but what? You know, you're playing one game against a team. Uh, a lot can happen in a baseball game. Uh, and a team, that, and it's their, yeah. it's a team at their best too. You're gonna face yeah. every, everybody's gonna be throwing their aces here in game one in Omaha with the chance that if you throw them in the first game, they have an opportunity to pitch a third time during the week, which is huge. Aces are wild when you're going up against Jonah Cox, baby. Oh, let's yeah. go. Let's let's do it. All right. Four o'clock game, Virginia plus one oh five, Florida minus one thirty five. Noah, how say you? Are you going chalk here again, or do you think uh, Virginia's small dog here? I know they've been uh, on a nice little run here as well, coming back uh, against Duke there to get it done. What do you make of this game? So this one actually opened Virginia minus one twenty, Florida minus one ten. Really? And I had jumped on the Gators there because I knew that they were going to close chalk, chalk. as a favorite here. Uh, however, it's it's not this far off minus one thirty five here. I. Nick Parker has been better than Brandon Sprout as of recent. Nick Parker, the projected Virginia starter that I have here, he, he took a line drive off the face against Florida State earlier this season. <laughs> he's settled back in and he's got a 270 ERA in his last seven starts after breaking his collarbone. Brandon Sprout with a four ERA throughout the postseason, three starts. Um, Florida is just. They are tough to handicap here in Omaha because last weekend I thought that they would struggle against elite pitching with South Carolina because they are a team that is reliant on the long ball. They still hit the home run against South Carolina quite often. Uh, however, it's just I don't know if it's going to play as well in Omaha, big park. Um, a big stat to look at here is doubles per game, and they're 166th in the country. That tells you that they are really reliant. I'm hitting them over the fence. All that said, I have to take Florida here at minus 135. Whoa. I think that their starting pitching is at another level, but their bullpen has really, really come on as of late. And you're looking at three guys here and Brandon Neely, who is the SEC leader in saves, Cade Fisher and Ryan Slater. The three of them combined have been great for the Gators in the postseason, all they could have asked for. Colby, what are you doing here? You know, he Baseball is a sharp. he is a Florida Gator fan. You should know that. Really, but uh, but uh, look, Florida's three and one against the ACC this year, okay. and Virginia got very very fortunate to get past East Carolina. And uh, <laughs> I just think Virginia's time's up. I think Florida. Honestly, I was on South Carolina last week. I was shocked at how good Florida played, and I think Florida might have something moving forward, some momentum, some real momentum. So I think Florida gets it done against the Wahoos. Uh, and and they'll be used to it. Like I feel like that trip to Omaha, Florida, Nebraska. I feel like Nebraska is just Florida, but just over in uh, the northern part of the country, <laughs> Midwest yeah, Florida. Yeah. Uh, I do feel like you're. Oh. I mean, instead of you know a gator, you're you're maybe driving with those carts that are called gators, or what? What are those like little? Uh, <laughs> yeah, look, yeah. Larry the Cable Guy is yeah, from Kubota. Nebraska. That's our pal, right? Yeah. He's Friend from Nebraska. The Half the people Mark, think he's from Florida. J Mark is right next door in Iowa. You know, he's driving around in something with six wheels and multiple <laughs> axles. And extra I wonder if drive. I wonder if Larry the Cable Guy is gonna arm wrestle anyone, break their arms at the College World <laughs> Series. That would be electric. <laughs> I, to Colby's credit, yes, he brought up the non-conference play and how Florida is three and one against ACC foes. I think that was the stat that he brought up. 
if we remember in the NCAA tournament for college basketball, UConn won it all, and they were undefeated against non-conference foes. Virginia's 25-0 and against teams outside of the ACC. Just something to know. Mm. Oh, man. Mm. He's zigging and zagging, yeah. and I can't get it. I am. This is the my least confident pick did here. You, did you hear? I, I have loved this Virginia team pretty much the whole second half. Where, of the year. And where, they were the team that I gave out on the show, I, I don't know, maybe three weeks ago to win it all. But earlier in the show, when we asked him like which teams met all these requirements, he first said Florida, said no, then said Virginia. So you Virginia. can tell. And I'm now actually gonna. You, I'm gonna as take. As you can hear, it's just the total. I'm, I'm gonna, for gonna me take. On this a, I'm gonna take UVA uh, simply so I can tap my CLV for my clients at <laughs> plus 105. They open as the favorite. Now they're the dog. What more do you need to see here? And you can hear it in Noah's voice. He already got his Florida bet in, like a good handicapper. He's making a case for it. Ryan, I assume being a VT man, you're going to fade Virginia. But I, yeah, I like no Virginia brainer. as a as a dog here. Are you kidding me? I think no, I might go. I'm, not, I'm not kidding you. Why would you, I mean? Do you remember how fun it was to watch those Virginia fans with that heartbreaking <laughs> loss in March Madness? We were all out. That was of, very in, fun. Yeah, come on. Don't you remember that? Yes. These are these are assholes. <laughs> go, these I have are, that video still. Awesome. Yes. Awesome stuff. You know what? When when they lose, please post that immediately right. after following the UVA loss. Uh, well, we can the, get we can get two more bangers out. I'll of just that. clip the eight seconds of it. We don't need the whole <laughs> the whole part of it. I'm on the uh, I'm on Virginia as a dog. I'm also yeah. speaking of dogs. I'm also on bird dogs. Love 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 the bird dog shorts. Love having the built in liners. Again, uh, super super comfortable. It feels like you're free balling, even though you're not. Uh, they the the anti stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. I mean, if you're out of the college world series, it's going to be hot. It's got to be humid. You're taking shots over at Rocco's pizza joint, hoping you don't go up Chuck at the Chuck. And the last thing you need is your, your, you know, your, the, the, the grundle area clinging uh, downstairs. <laughs> you want a smooth sweat wicking fabric again. It's you feel like you're your, your shorts are on air. It, these things are legitimately comfortable. I got the uh, joggers as well. I, I I've, I've come to a Renaissance. Like I, I reach a certain age. All I'm wearing is high end active wear. And that's what bird dogs is, man. It's super can, comfortable. Can I break in real quick? I can't, I'm looking forward to NFL yeah. just so I can spend nine hours in these bird dogs. No, I've you're never going to take them off. Only thing I wear around the house. Kids hate it. Cause you see a lot of the thigh. It's nice. The <laughs> short Oh, they, the they shorts are great. Birddogs.com slash pool. Enter promo code pool. You get a free Yeti style tumbler. These things are legit. Uh, Ryan was even Ryan goes, Oh, what do they give you? I go a tumbler. He goes, does it suck? I go, does it look like it sucks? This is a legit tumbler. Uh, highly recommended birddogs.com slash pool. And of course it helps SGPN and helps you have an awesome summer. You're not going to want to take these bird dogs off. We promise you. All right, moving to the Saturday games. Stanford plus one eighty versus Wake Forest minus two twenty. I, I mean, I, I'm talk me out of taking another dog here in the College Baseball World Series. No, what do you got here for this uh, Saturday slate? Oh, no, he's muted again. He's a real pro muting yeah. himself, but yeah, uh, I, I mute myself <laughs> for the ads. And shit. No, uh, no, you, anyways, <laughs> appreciate the effort. I, I will not after last year, I won't talk you off a dog. Yeah. Three of the four dogs hit in the opening dog. round last year. Dog. However, the pitching wasn't nearly as good in last year's tournament as it was as it is in this year's tournament. And I want to I want to go back to uh this part of it. Uh the field that we have, according to our friend Jonathan Mayo from the MLB.com. 27 of the top 200 MLB prospects are in this tournament this year, six of the top 10 and each of the top three. This is very good for baseball. Um, and real, real quick in the way. last six tournaments, we saw seven total top 10 MLB prospects. Just the talent here this weekend is going to be like none other. So I wanted to preface that little top. Because, heavy. Yeah. It, now, now is 
is that a change from previous years? Because again, not to insult a fellow college baseball player, but I always thought guys who went and played college baseball were guys that were too shitty to make the well, MLB. You had, you like, had to commit three years. Well, essentially, if you were good enough for the MLB, you would already have been in the minor league at this age. But it seems like NIL, the the rise of college baseball, that's changed. Or, or what do you attribute that to? Yeah, th that's one thing. But I mean, the minor leagues is a really grueling grind. And if you go into it, it from from high school, it's basically four at least years in nowhere town. And yeah. I don't mean that in any offense to some of these towns with not like a. Omaha. <laughs> yeah, well, Omaha is a minor league town. Omaha was the big city, like, baby. <laughs> it's, it's not, not like, like stand up, single like. a yeah, 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 or a high A affiliate of some of these teams. Like, it's it's a real grind, and you're always on the road, team bus, and all that's all that kind of stuff. For uh, a kid to choose college over the minors is not rare um, because you are getting an education. And the failure rate in the minor leagues for the MLB is much, much, much higher well, than just, any other pro major sport. So they, just think of the think of the uh, dating pool and possible tail situations. <laughs> I mean, would you At rather college. be on a college yeah. campus or a <laughs> town with a minor league? I'm I saying. watched Summer Catch. Freddie Prince did all right. <laughs> uh, the, hey, there's I'm sure there's some towns where they do okay for themselves, but a college athlete on yeah. a college campus, oh. I feel well, a bit of a layup, uh, couple, right? A couple years in Bakersfield or some <laughs> scattered ass at the University of yeah, uh, or you get LSU. a Division One <laughs> athlete at TCU. All right, uh, that to yeah. me is uh, the Omaha Storm Chasers is the uh, yeah. okay. minor league squad. So maybe Kansas maybe City be the Barn Stormers too, hmm. I believe. No, the upgrade arena football, man. Uh -huh. That's that's yeah, Iowa. Um, so so Noah. That being said, you're saying it's a top heavy field, maybe not as dog friendly, but exactly. what do you make specifically of Wake versus Stanford? So, Wake has a top four pitching prospect in the the MLB draft this year, and Rhett Louder. He's going to pitch this game. He has been outstanding this year. He's fifteen and zero. With a 2.49 ERA in his last four starts, he's looked somewhat human uh, compared to, I believe it's a 1.79 ERA throughout the season. On the other hand, another huge story from this NCAA tournament so far, I think we see Quinn Matthews. He's, I would probably label him at about 60%. I'm confident in projecting him as a starter. Every other one of these pitchers, I'm like 80% sure they'll throw. Quinn Matthews the other day threw 156 pitches on Sunday. He would be throwing on short rest here. It's five days rest. Usually college pitchers throw on six days rest, but they threw him on short days rest and allowed him to go 154 pitches. I think he's going to throw. He's been great in the NCAA tournament, a 225 ERA in his last three uh, appearances. It's going to be a real challenge for Wake Forest. This is going to be the best pitcher that they've faced in the last five weeks compared to all the ACC games that they've played. Uh, like no offense to those other ACC teams. They finished the season with the weaker portion of their schedule. And then in the uh, ACC tournament, they didn't draw some of the better pitchers uh, from their competition. So uh, this is definitely a step up and it's very, very interesting because this thing is also uh, climbed in the price. Uh, Wake Forest would still be my pick here to win the game. However, I wouldn't bet this thing. This is actually out of the four plays that I have, like that I pick Wake Forest would probably be my fourth uh, and least confident in. However, I just I need to see this team lose to believe that they can lose. If that mm. makes sense, can, can, I, I do love the that is one beautiful thing of the College World Series, and I'm sure Colby loves this. The idea of like a the sixth year like player who's definitely not playing any more baseball after this is just like I can throw 200 pitches. Like I don't <laughs> I don't need this arm after today. Uh, that is fun. Well, How, contrary to that, I mean, the kid's probably going to go in the top three rounds of well, the. That's MLB crazy. Draft. Maybe don't yeah. wreck your arm. <laughs> well, he's at nil. Come on, he's got a Stanford degree. Don't worry about that. Um, look, uh, Andrew Luck, the, the main thing. He, <laughs> he in one of his one of his classes on the day of the opening uh, game in the NCAA tournament, he had to present his final project, which was on <laughs> alternatives. To Tommy John surgery, so <laughs> you imagine knows about that is the true. durability of his arm 
This kid is the guy. He's thrown over 110 pitches in 14 of his appearances this season. You imagine a player on the Georgia football team having to present something uh, like a final <laughs> exam on the day oh. of the college football playoff. Yeah, I don't know. I think no, they, they work. They, they football, probably, they take care of those things ahead of time. Work out those scheduling kinks. No, but did you guys? I got a group project Zoom. Uh, <laughs> imagine telling Nick Saban that. Did you guys catch the end of the Stanford Texas game? Yes, this was a yes. wild <laughs> ending. So I uh, horns so down. A lot of times when you see this. What losers! I feel like that can propel a magical run when you mm. have something like that go, and then when when you when you consider like I was impressed by Stan for the times I've watched him, and then the the pedigree. Did you did you know Jack McDowell, Jeffrey, your boy Jeffrey Hammonds, Mike Mussina, Bob Boone? They're all Stanford Cardinals. This is a rich pedigree there on the farm in Palo Alto. I think yeah. they're a live dog. Fun fact: Jeffrey Kyle Hammonds. Peterson's going to be on the call for the College World Series, and he was one of the best pitchers in history. John Lynch played for the Stanford Cardinals. Mm. That he welcome there. Matt drafted tra- drafted Trey Lance. So I need to mention that. <laughs> so maybe he did have some CT. Uh, St- I'm going Stanford again at plus 180. I, I know I-, I know the case for Wake. It- they're the much better team. I mean, you look at the futures market; they are the favorite at plus two seventy five. Stanford's second longest uh, long shot at twelve hundred here. But again, this is one baseball game. I'm gonna lean mm. towards a team like Stanford. If you're, if you're, especially if you're getting two to one, like come on, that's an electric handicap. This is one baseball game. It is anything <laughs> can happen. It's one game. It's yeah. not a. It's not a best well, of seven series. I mean, that just inherently favors the dog. And right? Wake just put up twenty two runs on Bama. They're they're thinking. Their shit don't stink. Oh, they're they're right? exhausted. Uh, Stan, meanwhile, Stanford scoring yeah. all those runs. Stanford's gonna get this. Let's go. Let's go. I, lo- I like your battle tested angle, and I, I'm gonna need a dog for the dog portion of the show. Are so. you sure? I feel like a lot of times you just you just uh, no, on that, no. Right? I'm gonna listen to Noah, and I'm pretty sure <laughs> Noah said that he likes the favorite, but there's value on the dog. So in true Benedictine dog. fashion, I lo- he's really <laughs> learning from you. Uh, yeah, that's no, sometimes I'm, how you have to handicap baseball. You can uh, acknowledge that there's value there, but are yes, they going to win uh, the game? I, like that. I just, it, it, that's another step. <laughs> By the way, uh, before we talk about the last game, do you want to know what I found? Oh shit. Odds, Gary, odds on the jello shot challenge. Oh yeah. Have we not broken this out down? there? Yeah. Well, really? I, I don't know if these are officially this official, is ridiculous. but we'll, we'll throw them yeah. out there. It, it's worth like transitioning off Stanford because they're 40 to one mm. nerd going to finish last. Yeah. They're going to be eight. <laughs> Uh, Virginia, Virginia, they've been, they've been eighth in two straight years and they've combined to shoot 500 <laughs> in two years. Wait, I, we did. I, oh, I think I lost it. I, I did have a picture from last year. Uh, yeah, one yeah, year last Stanford year they were like 280, I believe. <laughs> in 2019, they Stanford only had 24. Last year, uh, Stanford had uh, only 231, uh, which Eighth, was was yeah. good for last place by by a bit. All right, so, Oral Roberts will outshoot them. All right, for, I mean, sharp angle there is the Omaha natives will back the Cinderella, mm-hmm. so they are going to go good, into the bar good and point. they'll. That's yeah. what I'm saying. They'll That's tally for Oral Roberts. Yeah. I'm you. All right, Virginia yeah. fifteen to one. Again, they're you can't is go this to win it all or yeah, like this is the to win it all. The most jello shots. Most jello okay. shots. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not the futures to win the the baseball, but all right. So Vir- I think this is game breaking and breaking, and I have a handicap for it. Okay. Oh yeah. Let's well, let me it. let me finish the odds. Oral Roberts twelve to one. Wake Forest eight to one. Which that's a horrible. The, the, no way, Wake. Come on. I, I understand that they're the the favorite, but that that's. Mm. TCU five to one, Florida four to one, Tennessee four to one, LSU three to one. I see the SEC schools uh, rising to the top. Ha, uh, you guys, I don't think you guys have been to uh, New Orleans or Baton Rouge, have, have you? This is a yeah. lock. Uh, LSU, Go right? chalk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe they're plus money. <laughs> like I would put it at like minus one fifty. Yeah. This team. So you have to play it off the correlation to how long they're going to be in oh, Omaha. Good call. Yeah. This team is going to win one or two games, which means their fan base will be there for a full week. All now, right. Is there a chance that Tennessee travels better than LSU? 
Like that's the only other thing I would think would be like I feel like Tennessee fans travel well. Wait, I remember they Brian, were in Maui. What did you, what did you say the Tennessee price was? Four to one. The SEC schools are all chalky. <laughs> well, they all get fucked up too. Like Baton Rouge, yeah. you walk around Baton Rouge, there's well, like people passed out now. everywhere. Hold on like, now, I'm gonna look at some uh, last year SEC schools. Ole Miss one and eight, two. Eighteen thousand did very impressively. Arkansas eight thousand. Texas A and M only thirteen hundred, but still good for third place. Uh, and uh, uh, Auburn only four hundred and thirty. So uh, an SEC school did you know not all the SEC. Well, that's why I'm saying well. I think you also have to pay attention to how well they travel, and I think that's why Tennessee. I know they're just uh, what tied they, for second. They, also, Tennessee desperate for attention. We do have some data back from 2019. Tennessee had 79 for reference. Mississippi State had 2,852, uh, which was. More than ten times all the other pe- all the other well, they teams won it that combined. Year too, right? Yeah, yeah no, they, yeah. It, it didn't yeah. have a ton of popularity. Uh, clearly, people from Mississippi like to do Jello shots. That's the that's <laughs> the Mississippi key take. touches that's Louisiana. Your angle. <laughs> so let's say proximity to, to who's the closest to Mississippi on the, uh, on the uh, board. Louisiana. All that's right, what I'm saying. LSU it's, it's, plus three hundred. You got those grenades that's down there lot. or those hurricanes? No, L- LSU at plus four hundred. Right. You gotta love that. Then let's talk about the LSU game. LSU. You is laying 205, Tennessee plus 165. No, lock it up. Are we Tigers here for the fourth game of the slate, Noah? Yes, I I am on LSU. This is actually my my favorite pick. It was it opened at minus 170. This thing's gone all the way to minus 205. I would still throw it in a parlay. I would still run line this thing. Paul Skeens is just not human. Um he's been outstanding all year long. He leads the country in strikeouts by like 50 compared to Quinn Matthews. Who's in second. He's got like 180 strikeouts and just 108 innings. And he has a 198 ERA in his last four starts. The tricky thing here about Tennessee is that I think they're starting Andrew Lindsay here who hasn't pitched like their best pitcher recently. Uh, That's chase Dolander who started the season slow they demoted him to the game two starter, brought up Lindsay to the game one and Dolanders seemed to have figured his stuff out. And through his last three starts, he's been much better than Lindsay. I would be paying attention to who starts this game for Tennessee. If Dolander starts, this is a, a great spot for Tennessee. However, Dog. Lindsay, just a four Oh nine ERA in his last uh, two and just two NCAA tournament starts. Um, he's been the weak spot for Tennessee. Uh, they lost the, lost his start against Southern Miss when he gave up four runs in the first four innings, and he was not stellar against Charlotte in the weekend prior. I really like this LSU offense. They've won two or three against Tennessee earlier this season. I think they can win another one. Well, yeah. they uh, won the first two, but the third game, the Vols put up 14 runs on him, and that breeds confidence, right? Ooh. I mean, 14 to seven in the third outing. Those were in Baton Rouge too. This is in Omaha. The first two games they played, uh, Tennessee was only putting up six runs total between both games. So they opened it up in the third game. Sean, does that give them confidence? I think so. Yeah. Why wouldn't it give them confidence? Uh, I think their pitching's been good. Ah, <sighs> yeah. I, I again. I, I I'm just. I keep dogs are barking. I, I keep going to these. I think if you play, wow. and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just play all four wow. dogs on the money line. No, three of the th- th- do a round robin then because one's okay. not gonna hit. Yeah. But but uh, four team round. Robin. I'm with you on the Vols. The Vols have that Ric Flair BDE that we saw this Woo. last year when they had the they had the mink I, coat. I, I'm gonna yeah. uh, of the dogs though. I'm with you, Colby. The attitude that Tennessee brings. That I mean, the just watching that alleged throat yeah. slashing <laughs> gesture. You're still the, offended. The energy yeah. on that. <laughs> the energy on that roster is palpable. You can feel it coming through the laptop. Uh, that to it me is. is is a is a team that I mean maybe we'll we'll talk futures here real quick at the end but Tennessee at plus seven fifty I think checks a lot of boxes so I'm on Tennessee here on the money line as well to complete my quad dog trio Kramer how say you I like the quad dog trio that's a it's a really impressive <laughs> Rubik's cube you Four created t- there yeah. hey, hey time is a, it's a, a flat, flat circle. circle. Of course, I, I explained to you why I was taking Stanford against Wake Forest because I was going to need to take a dog. LSU is an obvious play here. I love Noah's handicap of the Jello shots as well. 
there is some correlation here. You're you're gonna want to stack your college baseball World Series future, two year Rocco's Jello Shot Challenge mm. future, probably unless it's Stanford. Definitely or don't Wake bet on Forest. yeah or Wake Forest. Don't bet on those nerds. Uh, LSU by a million. <laughs> Chalky Kramer. Yeah, no, I mean, I, th- look, I just follow Noah. He's my. He's he is my a guy. Sherpa. I yeah, see- I, I just really, I don't like the matchup for Tennessee's offense. They're uh, a very power reliant team, and so is LSU. But they can hit for average. L- uh, Tennessee, one hundred twenty third in the country hitting for average, and they're strikeout prone. They're going up against literally like the strikeout king in college baseball. Uh, in the chat again, shout the chat. Chat has been lit. YouTube.com slash sports given podcast. Gary K checking in saying, let's go wake. Well said, Noah. Uh, Jake asking, uh, what book is this jello shot? Uh, bet yeah, on. I need to know that uh, he has to get post-show. down and deposit on that. Uh, Brian Reese saying, uh, looking for a second Jeffrey Epstein reference. He had the over at one and a half. Oh, wow. I feel like that can cash in. <laughs> I, Much I, like the cash the guards received to turn the other way because he clearly didn't kill himself. Colby, what, what were you saying? I was just saying, I was looking up, I was seeing, uh, you know, Nebraska f- uh, charts 35th in the country oh. at uh, serial killers by state to see if that was offensive. <laughs> but I, they're playing. LSU, which actually is a top ten state for serial killers, so I could see the NCAA say, really Lu- connecting the dots here. Louisiana, yeah, uh, they're they're high up there. Where's Mississippi, by the way? Because uh, it took place in Mississippi too. Oh well, no, Mississippi is sitting there at. Uh, I thought Noah was asking legitimately, like, where is what? Mississippi? <laughs> it, well, well, coming geography, back to the geography, the show, just, just real maybe. quick. Generally, serial killers have a higher level of intelligence, mm. so I, I, maybe a little lower. So thirty third in the U.S. for oh. Mississippi. Oh, they, oh, they only have ninety eight victims from uh, serial killers. Not, not enough, uh, uh, yeah. as opposed to you know Nebraska. What's so it serial be killer as like a, a taunt or a threaten? I mean, he should be off scot free, right? What? Yeah, no one. Wants humidity when you're dealing with uh, a knife. Uh, I mean, in cutting through flesh, sweat. it's gonna you're gonna just sweat. Well, and gonna, again, we I don't mean, advocate okay. murdering people, but yeah. if you're gonna be doing it in a humid location, the bird dogs <laughs> shorts and the sweat wicking <laughs> technology is just. Oh no! It's it's a breeze. Yeah. And yeah. Bird, dog anybody, anybody, email. bird dog dot com slash cool. Burns and what? Oh, I was just gonna say. Just continuing to riff off the serial killer. I mean, you get dehydrated. <laughs> you want a nice tumbler. Yeah, uh, a Yeti it's, style it's, tumbler. Birddog.com slash pool. And if you slip with your when you're doing the slash, yeah, the Yeti tumbler will not be damaged. No, I dropped this thing yeah. a million times. <laughs> Gets right uh, up. Anybody Unlike that their wants Chase Burns to play in this NCAA tournament, it would be me. I took him in mm. our fantasy draft earlier today in the oh, college wow, baseball yeah. experience episode. We heard about this fantasy draft. Yes. Uh, yes. Go listen to that episode. Jake uh, in the YouTube chat saying, uh, thanks Noah for the uh, Virginia future. You gave out uh, 25 oh, to wow. one again. It's all the way down to plus four fifty. before we give out our lock and dog, uh, which we will in just a second. Uh, Noah, Jake. any thoughts on the futures? So I think that this market is quite tight now. I mean, there used to be some opportunity here and I think that we're also seeing part of it be that, you know, the NBA playoffs are over the NHL playoffs are over DJs need something to sweat up <laughs> yes. and they're turning to Hashtag the college world series, only. which I'm never going to complain about. And this year's college world series, I think it's an awesome field. We have the number one overall seed for the first time since 2018 in the uh, tournament. We have preseason favorites. We have a clear dark horse, and we have a true Cinderella. Just the fourth, three, uh, fourth, third, fourth seed to get to Omaha in Oral Roberts. When you're looking at the market, I think that your three true title contenders are Wake Forest, Florida, and Virginia. Teams mm-hmm. that need help, so like somebody to fall in their path, is Tennessee and LSU. Because I think that somebody's going to need to beat Wake Forest to open up that path. And if that happens, those two teams have an opportunity there. A true wild card, and this is the dark horse, is TCU. Uh, I think that this team, with their hot sticks right now, they kind of control their own destiny. (laughs) Because you can control the pace of the game if you're putting up runs. And if you have uh, runners on base causing chaos. Because they are one of the nation's top stolen base leaders, a team that I'm kind of ruling out is Stanford. Uh, I just don't like the Mm. pitching scenario right now. 
Uh, they were kind of exposed by Texas walking batters left and right. It was just a true uh, carousel on the base paths and the Cinderella is Oral Roberts. So for me, the team that I kind of identified as like my favorite play is Tennessee. They are currently a larger price than what they were in the preseason, which all of these other ones are not. And I think that they have the pitching depth to, hey, if they lose against LSU in game one against the best pitcher in the country, they have what it takes to make a run and win four games in a row to get to the College World Series, College World Series final. All right, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna ride with Tennessee right. at plus seven fifty. I, I like that price. I like the mojo. I like the throat slashing. That's all I need. <laughs> Tennessee plus seven fifty. Kramer, Colby, any thoughts on a future price you like? Here? I'm betting on the teams that wear purple. Okay. LSU plus TCU. 380 mm. and TCU plus 800. I think you do TCU and Tennessee. I think those okay. are the two that have, that have good value. All right, let's uh, do it. Lock and dog. The double down play of the day brought to you by edge boost sports game on podcast.com slash edge. Double your bet with 0% interest. I'll let, uh, let you go first. Noah, you're the big dog here again. Followed Noah on Twitter at 70 spelled out. Then the number seven then NB. And of course, make sure you subscribe to the college baseball experience. Do you think they let you zoom in jello shots? <laughs> Just oh. do, do some remote jello shots. How about this? If you are a listener to this oh. podcast or uh, any SGPN podcast, you're going to be at the college baseball oh. experience. Hit us up. We will Venmo you at, at the college world series. Yes. Yeah. If you're watching at the college or if you're going to Rocco's to get some jello shots and you're a listener <laughs> to SGPN, hit us up. We'll Venmo you some uh, money to get some jello shots. If, if you're also at the college baseball yeah. experience, uh, <laughs> let, let us, let us know. Yes. We're, we're putting them on either LSU. Cause we're all betting that or, mm. or Roberts. Cause it's a cool fun story and they have to beat Stanford. That's they just good. have to. Go fuck yourself. San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. What do you got? Lock and dog. All right, some of my lock. I'm going to take you to. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to take a, a TC run line here. I think it's going to be around minus 115, uh, with the money line being at minus 175. I think that's going to be perfect sweet spot for a run line here against, uh, you know, an an ace. However, he hasn't looked good in the NCAA tournament. Uh, just kind of the bright lights or the pressure or both has gotten to him. Uh, Jacob Hall, 5.92 ERA and his two starts. Cole Klecker, the starter for TCU. He's been steamrolling opponents. He's got a 2.17 ERA in his last seven starts. Um, and then my dog, I, I call me a chalk eating weasel. I took all four favorites, and I think <laughs> I have a pretty good read on the field. Uh, I hope it doesn't blow up in my face and three dogs hit like last year. Um, but I, I kind of learned not to bet the price and bet the team last yeah. year because that's what I kind of paid for um, this season. I'm giving out a, another parlay <laughs> for for the dog because last last show it worked for me just fine. I'm taking you to the TCU money line and the LSU money line that comes out to plus one thirty three. Wait, real quick, <laughs> is that Kramer over there? No. Kramer LeBron is throwing the chalk. No, no, that was really excellent. It's, excellent everything. Can you show disgusting. us the notebook? Can you show it's, us the notebook? Yeah, yeah. It's, show us. It's please? disgusting. Right, however, right. it's just. I mean, look at this. I, yeah. Look at this uh, old school. How, and, and again, what's your age? Twenty-one. Oh, uh, I, I, don't, I don't believe. That. I don't believe that. In, and you I know, turned twenty-two in like twenty-six days. Or and something. you know how so to I write. Know. I can't do. You that. know how to write with a pen. Did your classrooms have chalkboards? That's what I'm curious about. With all that chalk no you're way. doing there, no way. All right, for me, <laughs> no, no chalk. It's easy. Virginia is the lock. Uh, just great CLV for me and my clients. And I like Tennessee to win it all. Give me them as a dog plus 165. Kramer, what do you got? Uh, I betting on the teams in purple. And it, it seemed a little bit like someone stole my idea. Mm. But uh, <laughs> I, I'll just do money lines. I'll play it safe. Kay. We'll just go. Uh, we'll, let's just say one of us put a football bet on TCU and LSU. Ooh. And I oh now have God. ample uh, bullets in the chamber for the weekend. I got football bet on Brooks. Two times, and I got football <laughs> bets on TCU and LSU now. So let's go, me. <laughs> let's, let's go, go me. Uh, Colby, what do you got? We're gonna lock up. I, I think. I think just the fact Tennessee playing LSU the last time, you know, they they were able to have success. They see him in conference every year. I think Tennessee gets it done. The dog that I like is though beautiful. is I think Oral Roberts. This team never loses. All right, so 
plus one forty. I, I understand I'm giving out two dogs here. Parlay that as the dog. Dong. The locks are uh, real, b- both of them. So all right, real quick, late swap. Give me. A, I'm not taking a fucking dog. Give me Wake Forest and, and parlay all four favorites <laughs> for your dog. Hey, it's I might be, actually do that too. Yeah, <laughs> no. there you go. Hey, this the guy who knows shit about shit agrees with me. Well, that's why, I'm, yeah. that's why I'm subscribing. I think if you leave one out, it would be Virginia, Florida. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. the one. If he won, you, you had Texas thought. and I had Stanford, right? Uh, we had to flip it. One mm, one of us mm, couldn't mm, go mm. Uh, eight for eight or seven for eight. So uh, the man yeah. in the box himself, uh, CJ Sullivan, checking in, uh, respecting Noah, bringing the paper and the passion, yeah. fellow analog handicapper, CJ Sullivan. Subscribe to the man in the box, aka the Bottom Line Bombs podcast. Subscribe to the College Baseball Experience. Colby and Ant is already kicking off 133 team previews. Oh it's gonna it's gonna be 134 because I forgot to hit record once. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> but maybe you, we'll you find guys that have, lost episode. Do you know who you, you guys have in your final, by the way? Out of the left bracket and the right bracket. Oh wow that you no, at, I, uh, I'll loaded, say that uh, 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 you loaded question. <laughs> Can TCU play so, LSU? <laughs> that have to be your bull. Cubs yeah. and the Phillies. <laughs> All right, TCU and LSU. Yeah, and I wanted to say it because I'm chalk here too. It's it's Wake and Florida. Like oh. I've been on a couple of these teams the whole season long. It's Tennessee I TCU man. TCU preseason Florida. I had them in the College World Series in the preseason. I had Virginia. I had TCU like prior to the tournament. Uh, it's it feels good. That's what I'll say. It feels good. Great That's way it. to go out. Uh, thank you as always, everyone. Subscribe to our podcast. Toss us a nice five star rating and review. We got our top ten uh, fantasy football lists uh, right around the corner. That's coming up. We got USFL uh, picks. We got uh, NBA draft props coming up. A full slate as we're live every Sunday through Thursday, eight thirty Pacific, eleven thirty East. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean Stacking the Money Green, and he's Ryan. Shout out to my sister. I have a nephew named Jax who was born in Florida. We got to unpack that shit. Kramer, let it ride. Dong, terrific snatch.